Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel, The Incipient Investor. So first off, I just wanted to say yes, I know I'm late to the party, and 2023 was so last year. But as the saying goes, better late than never, right? So I just wanted to do a quick, casual portfolio update, alongside sharing some of my thoughts regarding my performance and investment outlook. So i first like to commemorate an important milestone that my portfolio has crossed, which is the $20,000 SGD figure. So I only achieved it just recently during the final days of December, when equities significantly rallied due to the Federal Reserve singing more dovish tones, resulting in the market starting to price in three interest rate cuts starting this year. So uh, just to show you my portfolio, yes, before you come at me, I know my portfolio is extremely over-concentrated. It's basically only two stocks, uh, with about $2,000 SGD being parked in Fullerton SGD Cash Fund A to accumulate interest at elevated rates, while interest rates remain high. So, I would like to first mention that I did a trade by buying 300 units of CIT, uh, sorry, CICT at $1.71 per unit back in October, so when the REITs experienced the pullback then later selling it in December for around $2.02 per unit. So my rationale for doing this is that I believe we will see relatively higher interest rates as the new normal. So assuming that blue chip REITs will return to pre-hike prices is at least to me uh, not the best to make. Uh. Since investors will naturally demand higher dividend yields, I opine that if we were to maintain the historic dividend yield spread, the new standard dividend yield for blue chips should be around a mid 5% to 6 plus percent. Of course, this is just my gut feeling. So for United Hampshire US REIT, it has run up quite significantly in recent times, and given the fact that it already makes up <laughs> the vast majority of my portfolio, I don't think I'll add much to it, assuming I do. In fact, should prices near the 0.6 USD per unit mark, I will begin to you know, slightly trim the position off. Uh, Kepa Corp has also maintained a great performance, Bridging the $7 per unit mark. Personally, I find no need to trim my stakes in Capricorn, Corp, uh, given the fact that I believe it is a solid long-term hole with great growth prospects should it be on track regarding the management's 2030 vision. So I really do believe uh, they can achieve their asset-like business model. And then moving on to my portfolio performance, right? So my portfolio performance according to Tiger Brokers uh, is it has been rather satisfactory uh, in my opinion. It has been generating alpha and higher risk-adjusted returns, which justifies the massive under-diversification I've practiced. So, uh, obviously, I don't recommend my uh, quote-unquote style of investing, you know, this massive under-diversification, you know, uh, depending on how large of a sum you currently have. Uh, if it's a sizable one, I definitely do not recommend it. Lah. So, in addition, I've been receiving rewards from Tiger Brokers due to being a captain in the 2023-2024 to 2024 Elite Team Trading Competition, with my team typically ranking around 25th to 40th in the monthly rankings. So, so far, I've received around $100 in cash vouchers, which I'm thankful for, since that basically means Tiger has paid me more than I paid them in fees. So, as of right now, I must admit, I find myself being petrified. <laughs> by the recent run-up in the stock market. I understand that you must uh, divorce intrinsic value and the entry price, but it seems like I am paralyzed by fear when the stock market rises, which is a rather critical flaw in my investing mindset. Since the stock market uh, more often than not goes up, so it's a rather foolish endeavor, you know, at least historically, to be a permanent bear. La. It's quite odd that I'm fearful when markets go up, right? <laughs> so I simply cannot find much quality bargains in the current market climate or at least you know perhaps this is being influenced by my perception of entry price so in terms of 2024 outlook i definitely want to diversify my portfolio i'm reaching a critical point in terms of portfolio value where i don't think i can feel at ease letting the fate of my savings be solely dictated by one or two stocks so consequently i'm aiming to initiate substantial positions in at least three to four new stocks with differing industry sectors probably consisting of the larger cap stocks that I've covered in this block. So lastly, I believe the SG banks are currently still very undervalued, and despite interest rates potentially dropping, 
I believe loan volume increase will be more than enough to compensate for the potential drop in uh, net interest margins. You know, we do live in a very highly leveraged economy. So, you know, I, I continue to believe that the banks will do well, especially with the support of the government. They are basically pseudo-government entities at this point. Uh. They are very inextricably linked to the health of our economy. So my gut feeling is that we'll have a mild recession in 2024, but, you know, that's simply felt and unfounded without any facts backing up, so please don't quote me on that. So, uh, consequently, I might initiate a, a position in a defensive stock, like perhaps uh, Sheng Xiong. You know, I'm just throwing out ideas. So overall, I'm simply at a loss <laughs> with what to invest in for 2024. Perhaps I will maintain a higher cash allocation, or simply force myself to be comfortable investing further. So who knows, I may unexpectedly find some undervalued gems as I research uh, new stocks along the way. With that, that's the end of my quick 2023 portfolio review. Hope you found it entertaining. Do let me know any of your thoughts regarding my portfolio in the comments below and you know, subscribe if you like my content. Thank you and hope to see you around.